WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's November 15th, and I'm Abriana Heron. Coming up, hundreds of thousands of people with mental illness in Indiana go untreated, and that comes at a cost, not just for public health. That equates to about 100,000 jobs. So we are taking money out of our economy because we're not treating these conditions well, frankly. A new study did the math and found Indiana is losing billions of dollars. More on that from Side Effects Public Media. But first, these headlines. Tippecanoe County commissioners are expected to introduce an ordinance blocking large water withdrawals from the county. As WFYI's Ben Thorpe reports, the move comes as the state considers the construction of a pipeline to move millions of gallons of water from the county to an industrial district in Lebanon. The ordinance would block water withdrawals of more than 5 million gallons for a nine-month period starting after its passage. Tippecanoe County Commissioner Tom Murtaugh says local officials want to pause any progress on a pipeline until after the state legislature can pass water protections. If the state does not act on this issue or if, you know, it's not what is deemed adequate, then, you know, we certainly will look at an extension of that moratorium. Lawmakers have been considering water regulations that would create a process to ensure water withdrawals wouldn't negatively impact a region. The ordinance is expected to be introduced for the first reading next week. I'm Ben Thorpe. Another longtime Indiana state lawmaker will end their legislative career next year. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Brandon Smith reports Representative Bob Cherry announced he won't run for re-election in 2024. The Greenfield Republican has served in the State House since 1998, and after 13 terms in office, Cherry says he's ready to retire, grateful to have been part of Indiana's success story. Cherry has long served on the House Ways and Means Committee, including as its vice chair, helping craft state budgets and urging support for public pension retirees. He's also been one of the legislature's biggest champions of the Indiana State Fair, serving for years on the State Fair Commission, a role he plans to continue after he leaves the General Assembly. In a statement, the 76-year-old said, it's also been incredibly rewarding to help mentor new lawmakers. Cherry is the fourth lawmaker to announce their retirement next year. The average per cycle over the last decade is 11. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Brandon Smith at the State House. A Lake County school district that lost a vote last week to continue a property tax levy says it could now be in danger of a state takeover. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Kirsten Adair has more. Scott Miller is the superintendent at School City of Hammond. He says the district is working with the state's Distressed Unit Appeals Board, or DUOB, to balance its budget before the end of 2024. We will be the ones making the cuts, and they will not approve a plan that does not get our spending in line. The district is under financial stress as it faces a decline in enrollment. Hammond has been able to stay out of distress status by closing schools and increasing local funding with a successful operating referendum in 2017. If Hammond cannot reconcile its budget by the time that referendum runs out, school officials will have to work with DUOP to create a corrective action plan. If they do not follow that plan, the school could reach distress status and be taken over by the state. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Kirsten Adair. The Hoosier Ticket Project sends fans and families to Indiana University games for free. The nonprofit has sent over 1,000 people to football and basketball games since 2021. Co-founder and CEO Josh Bruick says the Hoosier Ticket Project was created for people who can't afford to go to the games. I think we all want to give back to this place in our own way, shape, or form, and I think we are a resource and an outlet for people to do that. COO and co-founder Jason Gurdum says the group gave away $75,000 worth of tickets last year. That's real money that people in the community didn't have to spend to go to games, and we're now making that possible for them. The Hoosier Ticket Project continues to grow with support from IU Athletics and donors. Gurdum and Bruick say they hope to expand with sports camp scholarships next. And now for our in-depth reporting. 28 million adults who have a mental illness nationwide go untreated. 
This is bad from a public health perspective, but it also hurts the economy. Side Effects Public Media's Elizabeth Gabriel reports researchers in Indiana put a price tag on untreated mental illness, and the numbers are staggering. Just a warning, this story mentions self-harm and suicide. Doctors have diagnosed Willie Frazier with depression and borderline personality disorder since he was a teenager. Depression is real, and it it can hit you anywhere. You could be at the top of the world, and then one little thing, and you just completely at the bottom. Don't want to say nothing, don't want to eat, don't want to drink nothing for days. It's just, it's terrible. When someone has a chronic mental illness, like major depressive disorder, finding the strength to seek help can feel unsurmountable. Frazier saw a therapist two years ago, but he didn't feel like they listened and understood how he felt. That's one of the reasons Frazier self-harmed. I even tried to rip my own teeth out because I just wanted to feel something besides the thoughts in my head telling me I'm not good enough. I wanted to feel as ugly on the outside as I do on the inside. Now he has scars running across his body, starting on his neck and going down to his wrists. Frazier is one of roughly 400,000 people in Indiana with untreated mental illness. Researchers found that untreated mental illness cost Indiana over $4 billion in 2019. For context, corn, the state's leading agricultural product, generated $3.8 billion the year before. Here's the lead author of the study, Heather Taylor. That equates to about 100,000 jobs. So, We are taking money out of our economy because we're not treating these conditions well, frankly, or individuals don't have appropriate access to the treatments that they need. Most of that $4 billion comes from indirect costs like premature deaths, which means fewer people are working, paying taxes, and adding to the economy. And some of this cost also comes from missed workdays due to mental health. Nationwide, that number is even bigger. Untreated mental illness costs the U.S. at least $193 billion every year in lost earnings, according to a 2008 study. People face many barriers to treatment. Researcher Marion Green at Indiana University says this includes unreliable transportation and unstable internet for telehealth appointments. Then there are lower reimbursement rates for community mental health centers, which serve people with lower incomes and those on government insurance. Some centers barely break even because government insurance pays so little. It's one of the reasons behind healthcare workforce shortages and longer wait times. For example, if you want to see a psychiatrist, that may take quite some time. And if we're talking about, you know, people with serious mental illness, they generally have to have some type of medication and medication management. So they need to see a psychiatrist before they can get the right prescriptions. And even if a provider is available, people like Fraser who are low income and don't have insurance would still be unable to access care. Therapists cost so much. Mental medicine costs so much. And I'm just like, I'm not going to pay for this when I, I can't afford it. Indiana lawmakers unanimously approved Senate Bill 1 earlier this year. It aims to expand community mental health services and sustain the crisis hotline 988. But it received a fraction of the money that mental health experts say the state urgently needs. Advocates say the law is a step in the right direction. Still, it's not nearly enough to move the needle. But mental health experts say having open conversations to normalize mental health care can go a long way to address the stigma around it. That's what Frazier is trying to do. There's nothing wrong with Black people and their scars. If you're going through it and it's hard to stop, don't feel bad. You're not alone here. Nobody is ever alone. Frazier's last suicide attempt was two years ago, and he hasn't harmed himself since July. Now he's trying to get his own insurance so he's closer to accessing the health care he needs. I'm Elizabeth Gabriel, Side Effects Public Media. If you or someone you know are in a mental health crisis, you can call the Mental Health Crisis in Suicide Prevention Line, 988. Side Effects Public Media is a health reporting collaboration of NPR member stations across the Midwest. It is based here at WFYI in Indianapolis. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. 
Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Darian Benson, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Abriana Heron. Our news director is Sarah Neal Estes. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share and find us wherever you get your podcasts to hear more stories about your community. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com.